Hello everyone and thanks for joining us today on the Inside Warrington podcast. Now as you may notice we're with James Lafewhite who's former Warrington Wolves star, Toronto Wolfpack, uh, Lee and Bradford. So we're here inside his new business Fuel Hub and we're going to be learning all about James's journey so far from a professional rugby player uh, now to a, a new dad, yep. new business owner. Yep. How, are you, how are you finding it all? Um, pretty busy, chaos, time is, um, is a very valued thing at the minute now. Um, Obviously, building the business, dealing with um, Stanley, who's my um, seven-month-old son. Seven I'm also months. a stepdad to Alfie, who's eight, um, Michelle's son. Um, and yeah, just things are really busy, but very promising. Everything's going in the right direction. Good. Do you need an eighth day in the week yet? Definitely. I need more, <laughs> need more hours in the day. I think if we can all find that extra day in the week, it would uh, would be quite nice. So just going back from the start, really, James, you, you know, in Warrington, you're quite a prolific person. You've obviously had a, a great career, um, albeit sh quite short-lived through through injury, um, but you've notched over 100 appearances through different professional appearances through different clubs, and played some fantastic games, and obviously played with some of the biggest names that have come from the town, the likes of your Benny Westwoods and your Ryan Atkins, as, as we know. So let's just go back. Obviously, we're going to be talking about Fuel Hub today, um, but rugby, is it something that you always thought of? I mean, you've been that size since you've been 11, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I always aspired to be a rugby player from young. Uh, when I was really young, I used to go and watch Wigan Warriors with my dad um, at Central Park. Um, you're talking, I was four or five. Um, and then from there, I went to the DW. Um, it was JJB with my dad and my granddad to watch Wigan. Um, and then as I started getting older, um, I, was, I was signed to Warrington through the scholarship system. Um, I started taking more of an interest in Warrington from, say, 13, 14 and playing alongside that with Crossfields and at Penkov High School. Um, and from 16, I kind of realised that if I wanted to, I probably could give it a good shot and hopefully yeah. become a professional. Um, so from the age of 16, I um, went to Priestley College, carried on playing rugby um, and for Crossfields. And from the age of 18, um, I signed professionally for Warrington. Yeah. Um, but through leading up to that, I was in the academy, which is the under 18s at Warrington and the reserves. Yeah. Um, so obviously I impressed in their age groups um, and then that's when I signed a professional contract at 18. So what, what was that process like? So going from sort of like a, a scholarship level player still in college, was it, was it nervous? Was it nerve wracking? Did you have an inkling that you were going to get offered the contract or did you have to have a plan B if it, if it didn't work out? Yeah, well, the reason I went to Priestley College is because I had to try and get some sort of career behind me in case it didn't come off, um, which was BTEC sport. So I was always sporty. Um, mm. So that's why I did that at Priestley. But um, like I say, I kind of, I, w I was quite talented. So obviously I thought if I really have the right attitude and the train hard um, yeah. and everything, like everything was there, I had the support network around me. My mum and dad were amazing and um, taking me all over the country. Um, so I thought if I, if I really wanted to do it, then I would have a good chance of yeah. becoming a professional. And it came true. And it did. Uh, so you signed for, for Warrington. Um, they then moved you to Hull KR, was it? And your first appearance in, in 2012. So you only would have been, what, 20, 21? 20 I was when I made my first Super League appearance. So I signed professionally at Warrington at 18. Um, and then for, for 18 months, two years, I was in and around the first team squad, getting yeah. experience, but I never got my shot in the first team. Yeah. Um, look, unfortunately for me at this point, there was a lot of good players in the squad at that mm. point. You're talking Benny Westwood. Uh, Louis Anderson, Vinnie Anderson, um, Trent Waterhouse, these are all in my position. Yeah. Um, and then on the back of that, you had Lee Brayers and, and Michael Monaghan, Joel Monaghan yeah, yeah. as well. So it was quite a tough time to, to break into the first team at Warrington. Mm. Um, there's been other years where there's been injury crises and there's not been as many players and it might have been a bit easier to break into the squad. Yeah. So for me, I had to go out on loan and um, get some experience elsewhere. So when I was 20, I went on loan to Hull KR, yeah. which was a big experience moving away from home, living up in Hull. Um, so I lived up in Hull and they, they gave me my Super League debut, which was against, have you got it? Salford, know. it was against <laughs> Salford in, a, in the summer of 2012. Um, Must have been a big moment for you. Yeah, it was. All this, all this time, you get the call up, you put yeah. on the, the shirt on for the first time. Yeah. You're bricking it, or you? Yeah, right? I was. I was a bit nervous as well. And Hull, Hull KR, it's uh, the fans are pretty, pretty, um, 
pretty mad. Like they, <laughs> they love the rugby, and uh, so there's no pressure. Yeah, no pressure. There's probably there was over ten thousand there, I reckon. Um, and actually, the second game I played for Hull KR on loan was the Hull Derby against Hull FC. Wow. So it was massive. So yeah. it was sold out. There was probably eighteen thousand people there. Um, so my second game was Super League, Hull Derby. Um, it was pretty nerve wracking. And were you, did you play second row? Or you were second row, second yeah. Row. Second row. I started that game and I actually scored in it. I didn't score many, but one of them was in a whole derby, so it was pretty good. <laughs> 14 to be exact. 14, yeah. yeah that's God. what we, we, we dug up on, yeah. I'll, I'll take that, I'll take yeah. that. It's more than, um, it's more than some people. No, but yeah, well, more than me. I don't yeah. think I've ever played a game of rugby. <laughs> um, but no, moving, moving on from, from Hull, when you came back to Warrington the year late, you finally then got that bittersweet debut for Warrington in the Super League back against Hull KR. Yeah. Um, so again, must have been a pretty big moment in your career for you. Yeah, it was a great moment. Back home in Warrington, in front of the home fans. My family were all there. Um, to finally do it after after playing for them for so long and been through the system. It was, um, and I've been a Warrington lad. It was great to finally get my debut. Yeah, and it, was, it was great from, from all of us as well that have, that have known you for quite some time as being, well, you've always been six foot something, yeah. but seeing that first time that you got the recognition the yeah. Warrington Guardian what we're posting about it was, it was a really really nice moment but then it was only kind of your career that after after that period of time um, that's kind of where problems started to occur with injuries and I think you know going from it now you'd still be playing if it weren't for your injuries I think the first one happened in 2013 which you broke your ankle and yep. um, then you broke it again and then you went you broke your leg in 2015 missed the entire 2016 season got back playing I think at this time then you'd moved to Toronto yeah then you broke your, your leg again yeah, uh, or your ankle. It's legs yeah. and ankles. Yeah, so my injury list, I could, I could write a, I could write a book about it. But I probably had more injuries than most people will ever have in the career, and I was only early mid twenties. So, so yeah, like you just touched on, I first broke my ankle in the academy for Warrington, and then I made my debut, got a few games, and I broke it again, um, quite badly playing for Swinton Lions on loan against Featherstone. Um, so that took me about four or five months to come back from. Um, I've come back again. I've had another run in the first team. Got a few games under my belt, and then again I broke me my leg, which was quite a bad one this time. It was yeah. tib fib dislocated ankle. Um, I was 18 months on the sideline. Um, yeah. I missed missed a lot of rugby, and unfortunately Warrington didn't, didn't renew my contract. Yeah. Um, so it, it, this was a bad injury. Um, and but then, just 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 going on that, James, because obviously a lot of people here think you know sports professionals are really looked after. You're you're an elite mentality all the time. But that process for for you and your family must have been really difficult. There must have been some low times there where you thought even after you you leg, I know you went back yeah. playing, but you must have had a cast out in your mind thinking, am I going to go back playing? Yeah. This is what's going to happen? Especially the 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 one that I touched on there, the bad one. So I broke it playing for Warrington against Lee in the Challenge Cup, um, which was on BBC. Um, it's actually on YouTube. If you want to look at it, you can, it's quite graphic. Yeah. Um, nope. <laughs> yeah, but um, this was a really bad one. So I've, I've, I've done the injury. I had to go to hospital. I was in hospital for four days before I had the operation. Because they had to monitor me, let the swelling go down. I had the operation. I did lots of rehab. I was getting very well looked after from Warrington. The physio team Good. were amazing. The staff were amazing. So I've done about three or four months of rehab. And then I've gone back for another checkup. And the physios told me, or the surgeons told me, that it wasn't healing right. Um, the right position so we then had to have another operation to get some more pins and plates in there to realign it to make sure it's healing better um, so that was another blow tough process so i've gone 10 weeks on crutches in a leg brace in a cast then i've been told i need another operation as well which would then be another 10 weeks on crutches in a brace again um, so i think i went four or five months on crutches wow. um, in like laid up in bed i managed to get into training to do some some weights and get some bits of physio, but it was yeah. a really tough time that one. Um, you didn't let it get you down, though. You, no, you got yourself, picked yourself back up, brought yourself back to fitness, probably fitter than you were before. And yeah, I just used to smash the gym upper body. I had skinny legs, but I had a big upper body. <laughs> uh, I was on, I was on like the, the ski erg machine, which you, which is good for your cardio, um, and obviously doing lots of upper body weights. Um, so I kept myself in good shape and I kept in good spirits. Yeah. Like I say, the lads at Warrington at the time were all great, the physios. Um, so I was well looked after. But it's easy to see how lads um, lose the red and struggle. And um, if you've not got the right attitude, mm. um, it's, it's, dark, it's dark days. Obviously, you're watching your mates run out on the field every week. Mm. Um, and you're in the physio room, training on your own, 
um, and it's it can be a tough time. But luckily for me, I had a, a good family around me um, and a good a good team, and I managed to to get through them days. Yeah, good, good. And then we bounced back, and you moved to Toronto, which obviously a lot of people in Warrington have got their eyes on Toronto. They're now in the Super League this year. Um, a lot of high profile players are going over there. So really the opportunity came for you to say, change where you are, change your scenery, and go over to Toronto. Um, again, another complete change in your lifestyle. So you were partly in, in Warrington, partly in, in Canada. Yeah. Um, was that, what was sort of experience was that like for you? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on Toronto. It was, it, was a, it was a good time. I obviously Warrington didn't renew my contract. So I had to go out there and look for another club. I still wanted to play. I was only 25 at the time. Um, and for me, Toronto showing an interest to sign me. Um, at this point, I was there the first year that the, the club was formed. So it was all new. No one knew what was, what was going on, how it would work, when you'd be back and to to Canada, how long you'd be there here. Um, there was all sorts to learn. So we had a few meetings. I discussed it with my family and I decided to take a bit of a, a chance. Um, at this point, um, I wasn't with me, my fiance Michelle. I had no kids, obviously, so life was a lot. I had a lot more time on my hands, so the, yeah. the thought of going to Toronto for half the year to play and live um, was very, very desirable at the time. Um, so yeah, signed. Um, we started this this new adventure, and um, yeah, I had a great, I had a great year in yeah. Canada. It was amazing, and it's it's completely changed. Well, some might say it's completely changed the way that the Super League is now, because obviously they've got the likes of the Catalan Dragons in there, and they've got the. Um, Toronto Wolfpack, lost my words there. And obviously the leagues are bringing in other teams from Wales and places like that. So it is adding a new dynamic. Um, yeah. but obviously it's stirring up a lot of opinion at the moment. Yeah. Um, and obviously they're in the Super League, so we'll, we'll see how they get on. Um, but then shortly after that, again, unfortunately had another break. Um, and I remember we discussed this um, about a year or two ago, and it was a real big blow for you, this one. Yeah. Um, especially with your contract coming to end at the Toronto. You went, I think, did you go and sign with Bradford or Lee? I did, I went to Bradford. So I, the second year of a contract with Toronto, I went and signed for Bradford. Um, so I signed for Bradford, um, things started to get really, really promising. I was getting back to my best on the yeah. playing field. Um, about 14 games into my, my stint at Bradford. Um, just a freak tackle, took the ball in as I know, always do. And I, one of the players that were playing against Hunslet at the time, he's come in, he's decided to chop my legs, and one of my legs has broke, basically snapped. I heard it go straight away. I fell to the floor. I've said, I've heard it snap. Oh. Physios ran on. And he said, what, what's up, what's happened? I said, my leg, leg snapped. I've heard it gone. Um, so I'm lying on the floor. Um, I knew what had happened. I'd been through it three times previously. Um, and I knew straight away, straight away what, the, what had happened. I didn't know how bad it was. Um, but yeah, got into the changing rooms. I've gone to hospital, had an X-ray, seen a surgeon, and basically I fractured all of my tibial plateau, which was a very strange injury in rugby. It's the top of your tibia, just under your knee. I'd smashed it all in, um, and that would spell um, another six, seven months on the sideline for me. Yeah, yeah. Another really. operation, more pins and plates in my leg. Um, more time on crutches in a brace um yeah real tough time real tough time yeah so james you went from being with with bradford you, you broke your leg again um tried to get back into the swing of things and you'd be kind of at that time mate it must have been a real difficult decision because you did retire and then we had the conversation like look I'm, i don't think it's for me and you've got to think about the long lasting permanent damage now of your legs let alone if you did go back playing yeah. uh, how fragile your bones would be but then you went back yeah you went not enough mad so yeah, so obviously after the, that fourth leg break at Bradford, I had to, I had, had a good time to think. I had, I had Start calling you bionic man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had, I had a lot of weeks on crutches and on the sofa, and I, I couldn't move. So I had a lot of thinking time, and I had a lot of discussions with uh, with Michelle and and my family and stuff. And it come, it come to a time where enough was enough. Really, I'd, I'd had more injuries than, than most people would ever get in the career, and I was only twenty six. Mm. Um, so. I thought, right, it's time to, to get some of a career behind me. Um, so me and Michelle were having discussions and we both had passion a passion to kind of get our own business and, and do something. And um, Fuel Hub was in the back of our mind. We'd, we'd seen some other businesses around the, the country doing something similar and we thought there was a good market in Warrington and nationwide to capitalise. So 
Do we had early discussions for fuel up back then when I, I did this leg break. Um, so we started planning it and it takes a lot of planning to start a business like this. So um, yeah, so I actually retired from rugby um, and a few months later, um, I kind of got over my injury. My leg felt good, I was training in the gym um, and I was watching my mates still playing, watching rugby on TV on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. Um, and I was still getting offers to play after all this injury and everything that had gone off. I was, I was still getting clubs asking to sign really? me. So I Big thought, lab, that's why. I know, I know. <laughs> God, I don't know why. So I had, we had this business idea in the back of our head, which would take quite a good few months to set up. Mm. And I had teams wanting to sign me. So I'd retired, but in the back of my mind, I thought I could still play here and get paid for it. So Lee come knocking and I decided, Although we had fuel up in the background, we were progressing with that. I thought I could still play, get some money coming in mm. while we focused on getting the business set up. So six months after I broke, broke my leg for the fourth time, I signed at Lee. Mm. Um, I had a few mates there, I knew the coaches, and I signed at Lee and then I got back playing. Um, and then I did a full season near enough at Lee. Um, but fuel up was starting to take off, yeah. and um, towards the end of me, towards the end of the season, with Lee, we launched Fuel Hub. Yeah, brilliant. And it just goes to show that you've had that mentality from from being the age of twenty when you first broke your ankle at eighteen, right up until twenty six. You know, it's a hard hard battle there. But if we flip it on a positive, you know, you and Michelle decided uh, or created this brand new business based in Warrington and you know we're here today you've had a, a fantastic first year you work with some really big names in the sporting world so just tell us what's Fuel Hub what, what is it so Fuel Hub is a, an online health food company uh, delivering freshly prepared meals directly to your door anywhere throughout the UK yeah um, so basically we're an online company we're not like a, sh a shop you can come in and sit down and have a coffee have a food it's all online you go on the website you order your meals you select how many you want you can select which meals you want and we can cater for anyone. We do bespoke plans. Yeah. Um, we can cater for businesses, um, everything, um, anything to do with food, we can, we can cut base. So suppose really what it's, it's happening to that convenience market of we need something now, we've got the time, we're in a busy work environment, we're in a busy home environment, or perhaps you just want to make a change in your lifestyle yeah. and you can call upon you guys and say, this is what we want to do. We want to lose some weight. We want to bulk up. We want to get fitter. Yeah. And I suppose he can come to you guys and go, da, 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 that's what we're going to yeah. do and, so, and set it away. Yeah, so it's a convenience for a lot of people. And they get a convenient, healthy meal delivered directly to them. They don't have to shop. They don't have to cook. They don't have to clean. They get in from a busy day at work. They've got kids. They go to the gym two, three minutes in the microwave or you can put it on the hob in a pan. Um, you've, got a, <coughs> you've got a delicious meal ready to eat. Um, all the meats locally sourced, fresh fruit and veg, everything spot on. There's nothing put in it, yeah. chef prepared. Um, so basically it's, um, it saves people a lot of, a lot of time, a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and it, it's great, we're getting. Because uh, I, know, I know one thing that families and, and Charlotte and I are pretty guilty of this is we'll go to, let's say we'll go to ours on a Sunday, we'll buy all kinds of crap. Yeah. And then by Thursday or the Friday, you're looking, oh, well, that chicken's out of date, that's out of date, that's out of date. So the wastage of a lot of households, not just in Warrington, but the UK as well, it helps prevent that overspending, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, definitely. Um, but also the, the, the great effect of this is you're now working with Warrington Wolves, you're working with the Warrington Wolves ladies, you're working with um, UFC fighter Paddy the Baddy. Yep. Uh, and what you've just signed another one with a... With a uh, yeah, Molly, uh, Meatball Molly. So we're working with a lot of professional athletes. Warrington Wolves been one who you mentioned. Um, so I had good links through them and contacts. Um, so we're doing food basically for the men, first team, yeah. the academy, the reserves, the women um, on a regular basis. Every weekend after matches, we do through, through the week after training for the men. Um, so that's a great one. We're also working with a lot of professional athletes, rugby players, footballers, um, boxers, UFC fighters. We've got a couple of sponsorships um, going with UFC fighters, big, good. big name fighters. Um, fighting in fights coming up soon. Um, we do the meals for them. It's all macro counted, calories, oh. protein, fats, carbs, everything. Bob on. Um, 
the biggest thing is also coming from Warrington as well. So yep. we're we sat here now in your, your commercial kitchen where all, all the magic happens as it goes. Yep. So obviously we're working with some really high caliber people now um, for you and Michelle and obviously your family. What does the future from, from Fuel Hub look like? What are you, where are you now? What are the plans for the future? Where do you want to take it? Yeah, so, so we're about seven months in now to Fuel Hub and we probably, we probably didn't expect to be where we're at. To be honest, it's, it's took off amazing. Uh, we've got a team of chefs behind us now. Um, we've got the unit, we've got the equipment, everything's in place. Um, the brand, the brand is really growing. So for us, we just want to continue to grow um, more chefs, more staff, more equipment. Um, we're a nationwide company, so we do deliver nationwide. We focus a lot on Warrington, but we want to keep growing um, throughout the country. Um, but yeah, we're just looking to continue to go. Uh, we're looking at options of investment to, to help grow the business. Um, so yeah, things are things are looking bright Good. for us. And I've seen you've had the baby here on, on social media. Yeah, Stan's been here. Made yeah. a few little appearances. So it must be an awful lot for, for you and your family, especially uh, with Michelle as well, that you've got this open space that you can all work together and, and develop a, a platform and a business that hopefully years to come, if they're still living in Warrington, they can uh, they can benefit and they can get involved as well. Yeah. Um, but also you could branch this out into other rugby towns and, and other cities. So the possibilities really are endless. And I know one thing that that Charlotte and I will we'll probably chart on our debate on, on different sorts of things, but um, I love seeing business innovation and growth. Um, and from where I can see this, it's only gonna go from, from strength to strength, which is, which yeah. is great. Yeah, so as, as anyone who's in Warrington, who's, who's, who's been watching this on YouTube or listening to the podcast, um, you know, why should people get involved with you? What, you know, what is it that they should, why they should choose you um, over any other sort of business in this, in this area? In this, well, sorry, sector or industry. Yeah, in, t in terms of Warrington, like I say, everything's locally sourced. We use we uh, use a top local butcher, Hortons. You, you probably will have heard of that. It's a good everyone knows Hortons. Um, fruit and veg, all local. Um, and yeah, we're just we're working with the town's rugby team very closely. So the, when the lads are running out, they've been fueled that week by Fuel Hub. So um, so yeah, it's a it's a really. So we owe an extended thank you to you, Michelle, and the team <laughs> at Warrington. Uh, get the business done this yeah. year. When they actually oh. won the Challenge Cup last year in August, we'd, we'd fed them all week. So when they won and they beat Saints, we were we were buzzing with that. There you go. <laughs> so Warrington, if you're listening to this, make sure that every meal you have throughout the day is provided by James and Michelle's team at Fuel Hub, and we should uh, we should do all that this year. Yeah. So anyone, one thing that I'm keen to understand is you've gone from a professional athlete. Some of the you know young gents in Warrington aspire to be. You know, I aspired to be you when I was the same age as <laughs> you in school. Um, you've gone obviously now to set up a business. Again, it's something that a lot of people sit there and think, "Oh, I wish I could do that." Or I've got a business idea. But if you could have someone that said to you before you start a few hubs, you Michelle sat down and said, "Look, here's a piece of advice for you." Knowing what you know now, what would you tell our listeners or the people watching on YouTube that if you are thinking of setting up a business in Warrington, what's one thing that they should they should keep keep a lookout for? Um, well, setting up a business, any business, you need to have a good business plan behind you. Um, you need to know what you want to achieve, what your goals are. Um, you've got to obviously do a lot of thinking. There's, I was new to business, obviously, after coming from a rugby background, so I didn't realise the extent of, of business rates and all, all your outgoings, basically. Setting up a new business, you've got so many overheads and outgoings. Um, a lot of people, it can take you by surprise. So you've got to make sure you've got a good plan in place, yeah. a good strategy, a good team behind you. Um, Obviously, you've got to, obviously with family and stuff like, for us, we've got two young children, you've got to just make sure you've got that support network around you because there's going to be times you need to call on family and, and, and et cetera. So uh, just make sure you've got a good, good, um, a good plan, the direction you want to go, um, and then you're not going to get any, any surprises along the way. Yeah. Um, but it's hard work, it's a lot of hours, but um, it's worth it. The, the side that people don't see is, is the long hours. Yeah. And um, they just see what they what they want to on, on social media, I guess. Yeah. Um one thing I've question I've got for you, as a dad myself, two young boys, yeah. Sleep is something that we've we've not heard of in oh God, four yeah. or five years. Yeah. Getting a bit of a chubby belly now. <laughs> <laughs> what can I be doing? <laughs> eating well, eating yeah. fuel hubs. <laughs> yeah, pay for fuel hub. <laughs> get them delivering me lunches to the office. So Charlotte, when you're listening to this love, you'll make sure you get an order on. Um, yeah. But no, yeah, obviously healthy eating's a massive thing. I'll yep. touch upon it. And preparation is, is always key to success, really, isn't it? So in yeah. business and your personal life, just um, just keep successful. So James, one thing that we're asking all of our guests on the Inside Warrington podcast is, what is it you love about Warrington? So for me, it's just such a close-knit close community, Warrington. Um, obviously been born here, growing up here, went to school here. You just appreciate the 
the the exposure you get through Warrington and everyone's interest and the amount of uh, like the amount of the way people come together basically uh, to help support your business. So when we launch Fuel Hub, Warrington Wolves come on board straight away. Yeah. Uh, over all their social platforms, we got a lot cool. of exposure, which was That's great. Uh, the Guardian are always there, uh, closely following us, often using us through social media, which for for our business is massive. Yeah. It's a vital part. Um, so the way the way the community just comes together, um, um, it, it's great for us. Yeah. Um, and I think I think just talking to Warrington in general, there's a lot of change going on in Warrington with the new development in Times Square. Um, there's a new bridge that's going in by Chester Road, the yeah. bypass through Bridgefoot. And I think Warrington at the time has got a real, real centre of innovation with new businesses setting up, like yourself, all across the town that people really are st starting to get behind of. Um, now, as our listeners know, Charlotte and I and the rest of the WBC team launched our mobile app last August. And we're really happy to say that James and Michelle have agreed to come on board. So if you've got the Warrington Buyers Club app, you can log into there and you can see you get a nice 10% off any, any food that you order from them. So. The way that you can get that is just give James a call. He'll give you a code and definitely get yourself some meals because uh, it will change your uh, your ideas on prep meals. They are so nice. We had some uh, yeah. a few weeks back when they, well, a few months back when they first launched and uh, and they are really good. So James, wh where can people follow you? How can they can get in touch? So you order online, www.fuelhub.co.uk. Uh, that's where you're ordered. We're on all social platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Fuel Hub UK. Um, all the information you need is on there and on the website. Um, if you go on Google, phone numbers on there if you ever need to ring us um, and web um, email. So you can uh, find us very easily. Yeah. Any questions, um, just drop us a message. Awesome. So get onto social media, get onto the Warrington Buyers Club app. James, not much left from us, mate. Thank you for taking us through that journey from your playing career now into business owner in Warrington. And if you are in Warrington, make sure to support the businesses that surround it. Cheers for your time. Thank you.